welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at matrices and uh, Gaussian reduction. And today we're looking at uh, an extension of the previous Gaussian reduction where there were equal number of equations and unknowns into a situation where there are actually now more equations than unknowns and also more unknowns than equations. Now, generally speaking, if you have a look here, if there are more equations than unknowns, okay, the equations will be inconsistent. Okay, that is, they don't have any solution whatsoever. Okay, and if there are more unknowns than equations, then the equations themselves will be redundant, okay. Uh, okay, there's an infinite number of solutions, okay. Now, you have to be aware uh, of the exceptions. I will go through uh, one exceptional case, okay. All right, so today we are just have a, having a look at stuff three examples okay so the first example here you can see here um, we've got x plus y plus z plus p equals 2 uh, 2x minus y plus 3z minus p equals 1 and 2x plus 2y plus 4z plus 3p equals 4 okay so we've got three equations and four unknowns so there's more unknowns than equations okay so um, we'll just actually now uh, try and uh, have a quick look now first up as you know we normally go through this procedure of forming uh, okay uh, the matrix A, uh, okay, and then we augment the matrix, okay. Uh, if you can see over here, we augment it by basically uh, just adding the uh, well, the constants, I guess, if you like, on, on the uh, right hand side of the equal sign in as the last column, two, one, and four over here, okay. So we augment A, okay, and then we go through the Gaussian reduction, okay. Let's have a look. Now um, you can see here of and again, if, the, if you have a one uh, somewhere, it's very, really, very really handy. Okay, so I've actually done uh, a fair bit of work here. I'll, you can see here, oops, we'll just put the um, highlighter pin on. Sorry, I'll just grab a highlighter pin. Okay, so um, this should disappear shortly. Okay, yes, okay, here we go. So we have row two becomes equal to row two minus two lots of row one. So row two here, this row here, uh, basically we subtract two lots of the first row from it, okay, to get a zero here. Okay, and again, we uh, you can see here, we do this with row, well, row three here as well. We just subtract, obviously, there's a one there and a one here. So we just subtract basically from this row three, just take off row one, basically row three minus row one. And you get a zero here. Okay, and we're well on the way. And as you probably remember, hopefully, we are, our aim is to get uh, zeros below the diagonal. Okay, uh, now I've done a bit of a, a trick here. We've actually interchanged uh, row two and row three. Yeah? So we can actually interchange the rows. Sometimes that's helpful. That basically brings this one up here and that minus three down there. So you can see here we switch the rows around. But obviously that just means we're moving the equations up and down. So it doesn't really impact on the solutions. Okay, so um, we still uh, go ahead and uh, basically we try and get a zero here. And you can see here we get a zero there. Okay, now we end up with this situation here now. Uh, you can see here down here that we have uh, 10 lots of Z, okay, 10 lots of Z plus 3 lots of T uh, is equal to uh, 3. Now, I've let um, P be some value you can see here, okay, we let P equal T, okay, so like some number 2 or 3 or whatever it happens to be, okay, and then we can get uh, Z, okay, in terms of this number, uh, okay, T, well T is a parameter obviously, um, so we could work out a Z value and we could work out a Y value and we could work out an X value. Uh, but this is like a more of a general solution when I put a T in, okay. All right, so we now have a, a redundant case actually, okay. So we've got a, an infinite number of solutions, so whatever value I select for P, I'll get a different X, Y and Z obviously, okay. Hmm. Okay, so we have an infinite number of solutions here. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, now, uh, example two, uh, you can see here we've now got uh, more equations than unknowns. So we've actually got one, two, three, four equations and three unknowns. Okay, and again, we do the same sort of thing. We, uh, okay, okay. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look quite as good as the uh, other pin. I'll just use the other pin. Hold on. Okay, so this is the other pin. Okay, right. Here we go. Uh, so we basically create the matrix A um, again, and we augment it, obviously. Okay, uh, here we are. We augment the matrix A. Just uh, as you know, 
by adding that last column in as uh, the constant. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Go across here, 1, 2, 5, 3. 1, 2, 5, 3 is the last column there. Okay, so we now have augmented A. And then this is how we start the reduction. Okay. All right, so we are now uh, going to basically, I'll just grab another highlighter. Okay, and so first up, okay, I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying to compact these a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to do, we do row two. Okay, we've got to have a one in this position. So obviously if we take off from row two, three lots of row one, and we can see here also just have to, we just have to subtract uh, row one off row three to get a zero here. And you can see here, get a zero down here. We just need to subtract two lots of row one off row four. Okay, and again, we go ahead here. We, I mean, I've we could switch these rows, but I've, in this particular case, um, I've uh, basically uh, just, uh, you know, I could make, not apply that by minus one if you like as well. So there's lots of things you can do, but I've just gone through and just said, okay, let's uh, make a row three, okay, uh, equal to row three plus row two. I say we just make a zero here. So we just add this one to this one, and we could uh, get a zero here. And you can see here, row four minus three dots of row two gets a zero basically here. So we need a zero and zero here. Okay, so we basically do these operations, row operations. Okay, and then we end up getting, well, nearly all zeros uh, below the diagonal. Perhaps we've got a 26 here. This is the only trouble. So we have to do a bit of a, a strange manipulation here. You can see here to get a zero here. Okay, now. In this particular case, we end up getting a zero uh, equals about 8.6. So it's actually 146 on 17, and I just approximated to about 8.6 here. And you can see that, okay, there won't be any solutions in this case. So um, this is the uh, like an inconsistent case. And um, if you have a look, uh, we're going to look into GeoGebra for a second and just to see what this means. Okay, well, here we have the um, situation where we've got the uh, inconsistent situation, basically. The, um, we have four planes. Okay, uh, now, okay, so I'm just now try and try and have a look and see if we can actually find any intersection. We can see that some planes are in fact intersecting with other planes, but if you have a quick look there, there, there is in fact really there's no um, well intersection common. Uh, intersection, I guess you could say, and that's what we're after. So basically, if you have a look in GeoGebra, you can see that basically there, these uh, four planes um, basically are, are not intersecting in any common section, line, or point for that matter. Okay. Well, okay, here we have example three. Now, example three, well, we, this is a situation where we have more equations than unknowns. You can see here, four equations and three unknowns. Uh, we go through the same process again. Um, okay, you can see here, uh, we find matrix A, coefficient matrix A, okay, and we aug augment it. Okay, um, obviously, we augment this matrix over here. You can see here, oops, okay. We add the 6276, six, uh, you might not be able to see the 6276 six from the coefficient matrix here, A, and we augment, we get what's called the augmented matrix, and then we start doing uh, row operations on them. Okay. All right, so, uh, okay, so the first thing is, what do we do? Well, again, we have a 1 here, which is very handy, so we keep, uh, basically, you can see here, if we actually get row 2 and subtract 3 lots of row 1 from it, we'll get a 0. So we go through these these operations here. And uh, when we do that, we just get uh, zeros all the way down here. Now, we can also do this uh, nifty little thing. I just did it here, just to, on the side here, divide row 2 by negative 2, just to create a 1 here. Okay, so we could swap rows and divide rows by uh, constants, okay, to help us out a bit. Okay, so we've got a, a 1 here, okay, and then we just basically you can see that we, to get a 0 here and a 0 here, we just have to basically add, uh, uh, well, multiples of row 2 onto it. Okay, so you can see here, uh, row 3 plus 4, row 2, okay, obviously makes a 0 there, okay, minus 4 plus 4, 0, you know, and uh, again here, get a 0 here, okay. All right, and uh, we end up getting down here um, 11 and uh, 11 
well, 11z is 33 and 6z is 18. Well, actually, I've reduced it further here to 1, 3, 1, 3. So we can see that z is actually uh, equal to 3 here. Now, there was a, if I go back to here, I can actually, if I wanted to back substitute from, from here, I could see that what minus 3y is equal to negative 6. So y is actually negative 2. I could actually pick it out from here. Okay, I could have actually picked out that y was negative 2 uh, from over here. Okay, because I had a 0 occurring here. Okay, but a lot of times that doesn't occur and you have to keep on going to here. But basically you can see what's happening here. Okay, we have the same value for z here. Okay, all right. Um, so we get z is 3 and we back substitute into the row above. Uh, and get y is 2, and then we back substitute in the row above, which is row 1, okay, and we end up getting x is 1. So the point's actually 1, 2, 3, and we'll have a look in GeoGebra in a second, actually, at this particular point. But as I said, this is very unusual. You can imagine having four planes intersecting at one common point. That is a very rare situation indeed, okay. And as I said, it's just an exception. So we'll now go into GeoGebra and have a quick look. Okay, well here we have the, the four planes uh, again in GeoGebra. I'm going to, to show you. I've actually uh, labeled the point of intersection of the four planes uh, as A, uh, that red dot. I don't know whether you can see that red dot in the middle there. But as I said, this is a very rare occurrence that we have, in fact, four planes intersecting at one point. I mean, this is, as I said, uh, very exceptional. Okay, all right. Now, um, well, okay, that's all for today. Okay, well, uh, and uh, thank you for watching, and bye for now.